Fibro is all in your mind. Hi lovelies. So I wanted to do this video because I titled it something that might have gotten some people's blood pressure a bit up. I know that some of you are going to be upset by that title, but I have found in my own personal life that when people say that to me or I hear it or I read it, I no longer am defensive about it because uh, I kind of turn it around on them and I say, you know what? You have been looking into this. Like pain really is all in your mind. It's in your brain because um, your brain is what controls everything that goes on in your body. So yeah, you got it. Nailed it. Now I know that that has a bad connotation and people say it to mean that it's you're faking we all know that that's not true and that's just a super ignorant thing to say that's like that's at this point it's kind of being like well cancer isn't real you're faking it and it's like what well i just wanted to quickly go through some things quickly means i'm going to talk for a super long time about it so that's just how i do things i don't know why i don't know why but we're gonna try here so pain Pain is actually a wonderful thing for your body. Uh, a lot of you are cringing right now. But it actually is essential for us to keep us in good health, to keep us in um, good standing, and sometimes to keep us alive. Uh, so pain in our body instinctually is to protect our body, to alert it. There's actually a condition, it's called um, congenital insensitivity to pain with something that starts with an A, because the, the thing is, I don't know what the A is, but they can't feel pain, okay? So what happens is these kids, and this is just so awful, so I'm just gonna briefly go through this or else I would get emotional, but these kids, um, because you find out very early, end up breaking almost every single bone in their body. They actually end up mostly going blind uh, because they cannot feel if something is in their eye or scratching it. That scares me. I know my body is the opposite spectrum, but that spectrum is really scary too. So I don't think a lot of people think about that and when they think about pain because we think, where is it coming from and how can I fix it and why is this happening? And it's actually a really super natural thing for our bodies to be doing. Now, let's move on to chronic pain or injury or fibromyalgia because that's what I have. So that's what I know most about, but it can apply to other people with chronic pain. What happens is when you injure yourself, like if I punch my arm right now, the nerve endings in my arm just under the skin are going to send a signal to my brain saying you are you just got hit and my brain's going to send a signal down to this site and say you're in pain and then I'm going to flash in pain. That's a good thing because I don't want to just keep punching my arm. Um, also if you overwork a muscle or strain it or you're running and you get a cramp, if you kept running with that you could really really injure yourself further. But again, this is all happening in your mind. This is happening in your brain because your brain controls your dopamine levels, your serotonin, you have your neurotransmitters in there. You have all your signal information coming in and out of your brain. We don't know a lot about the brain and that's why mental illness and things like fibro have gotten such a stigma attached to them and have been so difficult for people to accept, I guess. I don't get it because I've had depression and anxiety as long as I can remember. So I gotta figure that out real quick that a lot of the stuff that goes on with me is just chemistry. Yes, there are stressors. Yes, there are triggers for fibro. There are things that you can do to lessen your flares and your triggers and what not, but you cannot cure fibromyalgia as of today unless there's a miraculous healing, which I am always up for. But that is because 
and there's tons of research out there and I'm not going to about to go through it but what researchers are really coming to right now their idea is that fibro is triggered because of an emotional or physical trauma for me in my life it was an emotional trauma so I was what I call perfectly healthy which was depression anxiety panic attacks because Fibro is hell. I, I know that the brain can do that. But there are also times that I have panic attacks that like nothing's happening. Like it just happens. Like I could be like perfectly fine and happy or in bed sleeping and just wake up with a panic attack. So I understand that there's some kind of chemical being injured in a car accident, losing someone super close to you, a physical assault, something like that. What happens in normal brain is in any of those events, it overreacts or what we consider overreacting, which is sending pain signals to your body because it immediately goes into freak out mode, which we like to call fight or flight. That's an instinctual just thing we have in our brain that when we have an emotional trauma or physical trauma, we're like, how the heck can we get out of this? What's wrong? What's hurt? I need to fix this. What's going on? All this stuff is happening in our brains that is just trying to protect us to keep us alive and happy and well. Well, what happens with people with fibro or chronic pain is our body never really gets out of that fight or flight. It's almost like a scared little kid that gets traumatized. Then every time they like say they're traumatized because they're stung by a bee. So every time they see even an insect or a small creature, they freak out and don't want to be around it. So like that's kind of what our brains are doing but it's doing it all the time. So, I mean, and depending if you have mild fibro or you have severe fibro, and a lot of people don't know that range either. Now, you can't just have a little bit of fibro, but you can have mild, meaning you have more good days than bad days. Your trigger points maybe aren't as sensitive and you're not as much pain. You could probably have a job or a part-time job. Severe is you probably have a couple good days a month maybe flares can last for months it's severe pain you're unable to work it's bad there are is a spectrum but you can't just have like a little bit you have to have 11 of the 18 and there is a criteria for being diagnosed with it i just want to get that out there what happens is in my brain is that it's firing all the time i don't really have days that it's not firing at some level but I do have better days and I have really awful days. My brain keeps telling my body that it's in severe pain, it needs to panic, it needs to fix the situation, something is wrong, alert, 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 and there isn't. So uh, the point of this is that, thank you, yes, fibro is in my brain. You got it. Nailed it. Truth. I just own it at this point. If people are like, you're just lazy. I'm like, okay. You try dealing with pain 24-7 and tell me I'm lazy. Um, It's funny when people talk down to me because they just, I guess they just think I've had it like my whole life. And they'll talk down to me and they're like, well, you don't really know what you're talking about. Like, blah, 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 blah. My college, da, da, da. And I'm like... Um, I'm a college graduate at Penn State University, holla. Um, I also got my cosmetology license at the same time and was working two jobs, so thank you very much. I mean, I've been a very hard worker and I've done that and I know that I cannot do it now and it's just something that I have to accept. So when we have stress or whatever, it's to the a millionth degree. It really just is like if you picture like the most stressful time you've ever had multiply that by like a thousand and that's like a daily thing just like a little synopsis of life every day with fibro and i i mean i like i said i've been a very busy person i'm a type a personality i like to get good grades i like to work hard and that was my identity i just wanted to work and that's 
very strong in my family as well. But when I got sick, you quickly find out that that's not going to happen because you just physically can't because trust me, I tried. But also the mild to severe is you may have just 11 tender points. You also may have all 18. And you don't have the hand and feet issues that a lot of people have with fibro. And I feel very blessed that I don't have to deal with that because I, ugh, I just, my heart goes out to you if you do. You know, understand what your body's going through. Do your research. If you're in chronic pain and you're not getting a diagnosis, you need to research. If your doctors are not giving you the level of care that you know you deserve, you listen to your own body and you tr you figure out what's going on with it and then you figure out some problem solving things because there are a lot of issues that come along with chronic pain such as anxiety and depression. When I found out that I had fibromyalgia, which at the time I had no idea what that was, um, a rheumatologist said, you had fibromyalgia and I just went, okay. And that was it. And we said, well, what can we do? Because we're a very problem-solving family. He said, nothing. That There's nothing you can do. So, bye. Give me your money and leave. But then what we did as a family is we came up with, well, what can we tackle? Okay. My asthma was out of control at that time. I was taking my rescue inhaler. I was taking my rescue inhaler every single day. If you have asthma like that, that's the kind of fatal asthma. I worked on getting my asthma under control, trying to get my depression and anxiety under control as much as possible. So seeing really great psychiatrists and also therapists, psychologists, counselor, whatever you want to talk, call them. You build yourself these teams to work on you. I have a wonderful chiropractor. He worked miracles on me. He is wonderful. So I got those issues under control. And so you just find the things that you actually can do something about around the fibro so that you're not dealing with fibro and asthma and migraines and headaches and anxiety and depression and anything else that was going on with you before fibro. That's going to lessen the possibility of flare-ups. Now, there are times where you're just de-stressing and trying your hardest and you're just going to flare because your body chemistry just goes, whoa, fight or flight, you're in an emergency situation, even though you're just resting. Brains are so weird, so freaking weird. You know your body. You be secure in it. If someone says to you, you're lazy, this is all in your mind. You're making this up. Just go, that's your problem. Like, I don't want to deal with uh, doubting myself. And I think when I finally did not get defensive about those kind of statements is when I stopped doubting myself because I I know I've been there where you're like I'm not in pain I'm not in pain I'm not in pain like just tell myself I'm not in pain no it didn't work you know you go through those like because you're just so desperate for it to not be real and you're you like when people are like ah oh, you made that up I'm like oh my gosh I wish I wish like that would be a dream scenario yeah own it, understand your body, research, do your own what works best for you. You know, talk to other people with it, what works for them. You're just getting ideas from people and trying things out and trying out what works best for your body because your brain is freaking out and they don't know why. So until doctors know why, we just have to deal with it and we have to be our number one advocates. If you don't like your doctors, if they're not doing the service that you are paying for, you need to be an advocate for yourself and you need to leave them and you need to look elsewhere. You need to find people that support you and you need to have a full medical team that supports you and is actively working, actively researching. They are doing as much or more research as you are because there is new stuff coming out 
everyday sources are reliable, sources are unreliable. You kind of have to be your own scientist and put these all together. It's super important to not just sit back and listen to what your doctors say. Um, you know, I'm not saying don't listen to your doctors, obviously, but there's a combination of having this wonderful team, tackling things that don't have to do with your chronic pain or your chronic illness, um, that you can get under control or eliminate completely and then um, doing your own research, being your own advocate, listening to your own body. The, the thing I can say is own it. You need to be sure in yourself and you need to not doubt yourself and that's huge. If you want people to understand is what I like to say that you are chronically ill and it is severe and it is happening, it's happening people. You need to be sure in yourself and you need to be able to talk to people about it and say, I'm chronically ill. That's why when people say fibro is all in your mind, I say, good job. You get a gold star, my friend, because that is absolutely true and it's funny because people are like they don't know how to handle that you know <laughs> the more research you do if you start throwing words that like neurotransmitters and dopamine and all this stuff they would that will shut people the hell up any day <laughs> uh anytime i've had somebody like oh, whatever you like you just want to like sit at home blah, blah. and i'm like do you have any idea what my life is? You can just be really like honest and relate people to it because sometimes it just seems like this far away star that they just can't even grasp the concept. So try to think of things like, how did it feel when you had the flu? Well, that's my day to day life plus some, you know, like not fun and know what you're talking about. So if someone says, you know, it's all in your mind, you say, yeah, actually, let's talk about that, actually. Let's talk about the specific area of our brain that it is, because it is in my mind, because my mind is my brain, and these brains are giving me fibro. So I hope this helps you guys in any way possible. It just kind of gives you a little bit of hope that they are still researching and people are finding it more and more interesting and getting into that field of helping and um, trying to figure out something for um, what I consider a fatal disease because we do lose so many people to suicide. So um, it is something that's real and is going on in our brains. Anyways, I love and appreciate you guys so much. Be your own advocate. Support yourself. You need to be the voice in your head that is supporting yourself and not doubting yourself. And I think that is the number one thing that I would try to get across in this video and I hope that I achieved that. If not, I'll keep doing videos like this until I freaking do. Because self-doubt self is your worst enemy because then other people can get in and they can get to you and you've become defensive. Treat yourself that way, the same way you would treat others and the same confidence. Okay, I need to wrap this up. I'd love to keep talking to you guys about this, but it's going to take me like eight days to um, edit this. I hope you guys are having a pain-free, stress-free day, and I'm sending out X double O's, and as always, I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye!